In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, welcome once again. We gather around the altar of the Lord to celebrate the mysteries of his love. And to that love, I commend in our intentions all your needs, all those things that you want to present before God. For all this, we offer this Mass. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion that we may merit to receive your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Islands, listen to me. Pay attention, remotest peoples. The Lord called before I was born. From my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I have toiled in vain. I have exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while my cause was with the Lord, my reward with my God. I was honoured in the eyes of the Lord. My God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken. He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations, so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response of the psalm is, My lips will tell of your help. My lips will tell of your help. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, pay heed to me, and save me. My lips will tell of your help. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. My lips will tell of your help. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. My lips, my lips will, tell will tell of your help. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your help. Though I can tell, never tell it all. O God, you have taught me from my youth and I proclaim your wonders still. My lips will tell of your help. Gospel acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion as a meek lamb is led to the slaughter. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. While at supper with his disciples, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, I tell you most solemnly, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, wondering which he meant. 
the disciple Jesus loved, was reclining next to Jesus. Simon Peter signed to him and said, ask, ask who it is he means. So, leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said, Who is it, Lord? It is the one, replied Jesus, to whom I give the piece of bread that I shall dip in the dish. He dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. At that instant, after Judas had taken the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus then said, what you're going to do, do quickly. None of the others at table understood the reason he said this. Since Judas had charge of the common fund, some of them thought Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or telling him to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the piece of bread, he went out. Night had fallen. When he had gone, Jesus said, Now has the Son of Man been glorified, and in him God has been glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself, and will glorify him very soon. My little children, I shall not be with you much longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow me now. You will follow me later. Peter said to him, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Lay down your life for me, answered Jesus. I tell you most solemnly, before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. The Gospel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, today we can see the drama of Holy Week developing very quickly um, in front of us. The drama of Holy Week, which one could say is the drama of daily living, and that is the forces of good and evil and how they play up in our lives. And we can see that so clearly from the Gospel. We have two characters today, two responses, if you want. Um, Jesus and uh, Peter, who wants to give his life, wants to surrender himself to Jesus. And we have Judas, who is just thinking of himself. And both are the two sides of the coin, even in our own situations. You know, that there is good and evil in the world, I mean, I don't think I have to let you um, know, you know full well in our daily living, the spiritual battle that happens within is something else. There is no doubt that when we are led, tempted, and sometimes encouraged by the world in which we live to go, if you want, the wrong way, we fall into the prey of darkness. Notice what happens in today's Gospel when Judas goes out to begin the process of betraying Jesus totally. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out. Then the Gospel tells us, night had fallen, darkness. I find these words quite disturbing actually, because sometimes when I choose in my life to 
stray from that gospel path, darkness takes over. And you know, this week, Holy Week, is very much that battle between good and evil, between light and darkness. And we will see the fullness of darkness on Good Friday when Jesus dies on the cross. But what we can never allow ourselves to be tempted with is that we have to live in that darkness. We're called to be children of the light. We're called to live the joy of, gospel of the gospel message. We're called to live as children of God, my dear friends, and that is our greatest dignity. Yes, there is a spiritual battle going on all the time. Sometimes we don't see it. Look at this virus. We can't see it. If we could see it, we could do something about it. Now we try to do something about it without seeing. And the, the, the world of darkness, the world of, of the spirit is very similar. We don't know because we cannot see. And yet we are promised that the victory is the victory of God. The victory of Jesus on the cross which has power over all darkness. So, my dear friends, today let's concentrate on Peter rather than on Judas. Peter, who being such a weak man because he too will betray Jesus, nonetheless, he loves Jesus. And you know, half the spiritual battle is won in Peter. It's not that he is free from the temptations. It's not that he is free from, uh, you know, the, the circumstances of life. He is a human being, but a loyal and loving son of God, which is what makes Peter such a beautiful person. Look, he wants to follow Jesus wherever Jesus goes. You know, I wonder how often I want to follow Jesus wherever Jesus goes. Because like you, like most people, the cross is frightening. And we can see it today in the, in the terrible things that are happening. Who wants to embrace the cross? And yet the cross is the promise of life. So Peter says, Lord, I will lay down my life for you. And do you know what? He means it because he really loves Jesus. And Jesus res responds, before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. How true. You know, my dear friends, hopefully we will be like Peter, that we will fail absolutely but that we want to love God absolutely true as well so my dear friends in this drama of Holy Week as we now fast approach the three days of that life giving passion death and resurrection of Jesus let us choose the way of the gospel let us choose the way of light. Let us choose the way of God. And you know, Judas and Peter are given to us today as examples of response. But there is one response which was always perfect. That's the response of our Blessed Lady, Mary. She responded with her heart, in silence, in quietness, in sadness, in pain, in sorrow. But she said yes. And so we ask her intercession that 
and her help that we may be able to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. That we may be able to follow Jesus to the glory of life, which is his promise to us. Let us pray, dear friends, for the Church, that throughout the world it may continue to pray, proclaim the gospel message of joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious, hear us. us. We pray for our authorities, those who govern us and govern all nations, that during this time of challenge, they may discern to serve their people in justice, in peace, and always looking for the good of all. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be here. We pray for all those who are sick and those who care for them. We pray very especially that the warmth of God's love will always surround them. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be here. Us. Let us pray, my dear friends, for our families, for all those we love, as we seek God's protection at this time. We pray for all those who have asked our prayers. Today, in a special way, I'd like to remind you to pray for little Riley. Let us pray for uh, those for whom we have promised to pray too. May God's blessing be always upon us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we commend ourselves and we commend all God's people to the loving care of Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father in heaven, listen to the prayers which we make in faith and keep us always close to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise, praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favourably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those who make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. To him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, 
Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Carmel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially the Ganilla and Isola families, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My dear friends, may the peace for, that comes from the heart of Jesus fill your hearts, fill your homes, fill your families. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, we are free in your mercy, age of body and drink and blood. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We make our spiritual communion. Jesus, really present in the most holy sacrament of the altar, since I cannot now receive you under the sacramental veil, I beseech you with a heart full of love and longing to come spiritually into my soul, to the immaculate heart of your most holy mother, and to abide with me, you in me and I in you, in time and in eternity. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, thank you for uh, joining us in, this, in the celebration of this Holy Eucharist. Um, we pray and continue to pray for this, um, the, these challenging times that we're living in. Please be safe. Our Mass is now ended. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.